Today we will be commemorating the anniversary of Imam Zain al Abidin's martyrdom. Imam Zain al Abidin, the fourth Imam of Ahlul Bayt, السلام, was the Imam who took the torch of the succession from his father, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and he passed it on to his own successor, which is Imam Muhammad al-Baqir. Imam Zain al-Abidin was 23 year old when his father, Imam Hussein, was martyred in Karbala. And he was an eyewitness to that tragedy. He did not participate in the battle because he was extremely sick to the point he could not move, he could not stand up, he could not do anything basically. And indeed his sickness was a true blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because if he was not sick that day, he would have been killed. He would have participated in the battle and he would have been killed ultimately. However, Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam played a major role in disseminating the message of the revolution, in challenging the oppressors, in guiding the masses. The Umayyad dynasty manipulated the masses by casting an image of a rebel about Imam Hussein alayhi salam. They depicted Imam Hussein as a man who rebelled against the legitimate leader. Basically, they told the masses that those are a bunch of terrorists, referring to the family of the Prophet. That's why people would encounter the family of the Prophet with disgust and sometimes disrespect. It was an Imam Zain al Abidin السلام, who took it upon himself to educate the masses, to tell them what happened in Karbala, to awaken the sleeping giant, to tell them who Yazid was and who Imam Hussein was. So Imam al Hussein and Imam Zain al Abidin, as he was taken as a war captive, he always, he always made sure that he would take advantage of every possible opportunity to educate people. He would not react at all. I was just talking about his beautiful, noble manner dealing with his own enemy. He had a laid-back personality who would not react at all to the provocation of his own enemies. And instead of being provoked, the Imam السلام, takes every opportunity to educate others. So when he was in Syria, upon arriving in Syria as a war captive, some people come and say hurtful things, make hurtful comments. An elderly man being influenced by the Umayyad propaganda, he approached Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam and he tells the Imam, Alhamdulillah, alladhi qatalakum wa fadahakum wa akdaba uhduthatakum wa nasara. Amir al Mu'mineen, Yazid ibn Mu'awiyah alaykum. He says, I'm so happy that God 
He's telling the Imam Zain al-Abideen, I'm so happy that God exposed you guys, killed your dad, and he made Amir al-Mu'mineen Yazid as the triumphant, as the victorious one. I'm so happy to see that. The Imam never reacted at all. All he did, he looks at the man, he is an elderly man, he seems a nice person, but he's a brainwashed. He's a brainwashed. How many people, my dear brothers and sisters, you and I know in this country who are good people, decent people, but they are brainwashed? How many of you watched that video that was released two days ago on Dearborn, depicting people of Dearborn as violent, as, you know, backward people? It depicts all men, meaning you all having four wives. I bet there is anyone of you here has four wives. And it makes, basically it distorts the entire truth about the Muslim community. And there are people who would believe, who would believe that. This is propaganda. And those who believe in the propaganda, that doesn't mean they are necessarily evil people. They are not. Indeed, it could be the quite opposite because naive people could be tricked any minute. And it is our responsibility, instead of being so upset at such film, that we educate the Americans about our religion. We tell them the truth about our religion. We don't need to react. We don't need to curse anyone. All we need to do is we Muslims also need to produce another movie of three, four minutes, put on YouTube and have Muslim, non-Muslims watch people in Dirbon working peacefully, going about their business peacefully, dealing with non-Muslims peacefully. It's a peaceful community. Come and watch us. So Imam Zain al-Abideen alayhi salam would not react. He would tell this man, he says, you seem a good person. And I'm sure you have read the Quran. I'm sure as a Muslim you have read the Quran. And the elderly man says, yes, of course I have read the Quran. Qala ya shaykh. And look how respectful the Imam is. He calls him shaykh. Shaykh is a reference to an elderly man. When you respect an elderly man, you call him a shaykh. Qala ya shaykh, hal qara'ta al-Qur'an? Have you read the Qur'an? He says, yes, of course. I have. Qala, have you read the ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, innama yuridu Allah liyudhhib ankum al-rijsa ahla al-bayt wa yutahhirakum tathira in chapter 35. Ayah 35, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Truly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would want to remove all impurity from you, the family of the Prophet. Have you read that verse? He says, yes. He says, Nahnu ahlul bayt. We are the family of the Prophet. Qala billahi alayk, antum hum? Are you sure you are the family of the Prophet? Qala wallahi nahnuhum. Have you read another ayah in the Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs the Prophet to tell Muslims that if you want to pay the Prophet off, there is one way to pay him off. And that is by showing his family your love. قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى the Prophet is asking Muslims, if you want to pay me off, don't give me cash. I don't need your cash. But show me your love for my family, for my progeny. That is the way we compensate the Prophet, by loving his family. He says, do you know that we are the family of the Prophet? He says, are you sure? Billahi alayk, antum He says, wallahi nahnu. Yes. We are the family of the Prophet. And the man wakes up. 
immediately. And he shed some tears. And he is so remorseful for the hurtful comments he made earlier about Imam Zain al Abidin. And he asked Allah to forgive him. And he starts apologizing to Imam Zain al Abidin for what he says, for his insults. The Imam alayhi salam would forgive him in a heartbeat. Because the heart of the Imam knows no hatred. When the Imam alayhi salam enters the chamber of Yazid, now Yazid is sitting on his throne, and the chamber is packed with thousands of people who believe that Yazid is a legitimate, pious ruler of Islam. Al Imam Zain al Abidin was tied to a rope. And he says, the Imam himself, he says, لما دخلنا على يزيد كنا مربطين بالأحبال كالأغنى. He says, they tied us with ropes just like sheep. The Imam is saying this. وكان الحبل في عنق عمتي زينة. They had the rope on the neck of my aunt Zainab. So when they entered the chamber of Yazid, Imam Zain al Abidin turns to Yazid and he says, Yazid, I have a question for you. Ma dhannuka bi Rasulillah law ra'ana ala hadhihi al hal? What do you think the Prophet would do or would say if he sees us like this, being tied, his own family, his own children, his own daughters being tied with a rope? It seemed that what the Imam said to him made him embarrassed. The Imam basically embarrassed him. The Imam is telling him, you speak in the name of the Prophet, but you humiliate his family. And then the Imam السلام, told him, Yazid, would you let me go to the podium and say a few words? And Yazid says, no. No, I would not permit you. Now the Imam is only 23 year old. He is so petite, so small in size. He has not eaten well for so many days. He lost so much weight. So people were surprised. Actually, they were shocked. Why Yazid would not let him go to the podium and say something? Why? Why is he afraid of him? Why are you so afraid of him? Let him say. Let him go to the podium. Let's, let's hear what he has to say. Why are you so afraid of him? What can he say? Yazid says, you don't know this guy. I know him. <laughs> he says, I know the, who this guy is. He comes from a family that is full of knowledge. If I allow him to go to this podium, he will not come down until he makes sure he is going to expose me before Muslims. People insisted and the Imam went. And he gave that a beautiful, brilliant khutbah. Ayyuhal nas, من عرفني فقد عرفني ومن لم يعرفني عرفته بحسبي ونسبي For those of you who know who I am, then that's fine. But for those who do not know who I am, I tell you who I am. My grandfather is Muhammad صلى عليه وعلى أصوات الله. He gave that beautiful khutbah. Showing his connection to the founder of Islam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Yazid had to interrupt the Imam because he noticed that there could be riots in any minute after people heard the speech, the very beautiful and dynamic speech of the Imam. They will revolt in any minute. There could be riots. How to interrupt the Imam? He calls on one of his puppets 
to go and call for the adhan, for the prayer. To make the call for the prayer. It wasn't time for prayer. But in order to interrupt the imam and stop him from continuing his speech, Yazid asked one of his puppets to raise the adhan, the call for the adhan. And again, the imam salam was so smart in turning even that interruption into another weapon against Yazid. So when the Mu'addin says, Allahu Akbar, the Imam alayhi salam paused and he says, La shay'a akbar min Allah. There is nothing greater than Allah. And when the Mu'addin says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, I bear witness that there is no Lord but Allah, the Imam says, Laqad shahida biha sha'ri wa qalbi wa asabi wa basari. Everything in me, every cell in my body testifies that there is no Lord but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when the Mu'addin says, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, la ba sallu alayhi ba ala aswati. The Mu'addin says, I bear witness that there is no messenger, but, that, but there is Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. The Imam alayhi salam turns to Yazid and he says, Yazid, I have a question for you. This Muhammad that you testify he's the messenger of Allah, is he your grandfather or my grandfather? If you claim that he's your grandfather, you're such a liar. Then. And if you believe he is my grandfather, then why did you kill, kill my father? Why did you butcher my family? Why did you take my aunts and my sisters as war captives. Is this the way you pay your messenger, your prophet? And then the Imam salam came down after educating the masses. And the Imam was only 23 years old. But he took that opportunity to educate people, to guide people. And this is exactly the job of the Imam salam. The job of the Imam is to educate people and to guide them. And that's what the Imam alayhi salam did.